All right, well, in the co-main, Joseph Parker dominated Deontay Wilder all night long. He won 18, 11, 18, 10, and 120, 108 on the three scorecards. He entered the boat as a, uh, Wilder entered as a minus 700 favorite. Oh, hold on. Joseph Parker's here. One second, Teddy. Let me get him. Hold on. Oh, Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. I don't remember him getting hit that much. Apologies for ruining Christmas for um, the promoters and for AJ, but the Grinch showed up on the 23rd of December and spoiled the party. I get it. I get it. He he did spoil the party, but that's a, that's a good one, Ken. But here's the thing. <laughs> There's no spoiling a party if you're Joshua and you're Eddie Hearn because I've said it a million times. Joshua can fight anybody because he did his part. He got rid of Whalen. And by getting That's rid right. of him, he's back in the minds of the fans, and they love him. And I love the fans. He's the back. best that AJ has looked in ages, but we'll get to him. I know. He's back, and he's the greatest again, and there's no arguing with that. And so even though you're right that it took away the Wilder payday, Parker did him a favor because if Wilder hits Joshua on the chin, it's a lot different than Well and hitting him. Who knows? For sure. Who knows what would have happened? That was still a risky fight. Even though Parker beat him and took him apart the way he did. Credit to Parker, credit to his trainer, uh, Andy Lee, for having a great fight plan and executing it. But if if he if there if Judge was in there with Wilder, I, I'm sure that they're relieved in a quiet way. They never admit it. But they don't have to take that risk. They don't have to take that risk. They don't have to face that 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 hydrogen bomb uh, possibly exploding in their face. So, in that way, he was done a favor. And as far as the Grinch being, I get it, ruining his Christmas because of the payday, there's nothing but paydays for Joshua. Joshua, I've said it before, he could fight the doorman at the King's <laughs> Arms, and he's going to put 70,000 people in Wembley Stadium. Now, if he fights somebody yeah. else, he'll put 100,000. And... They're still aiming for that fury fight, and and that if that ever happens, that'd be the biggest, that'd be the biggest bonanza money wise, probably in the history of boxing. It would be a lot bigger if Fury can beat Usyk, which well, I don't well, think is going to happen. Well, that's the big thing. But. He has to get past him uh, for it to be that. That's that's the thing. But getting back to this fight, uh, Parker Wilder, give credit to Parker. I. I'm not here to knock Wilder, but I said for, he was fighting on ESPN. He hated me. I was going to say one quick thing. You've been saying for a long time that he really doesn't know how to fight. He's just got that one big punch, and I feel like more than ever against Parker, he was exposed. He just didn't have any answers at all for Parker. He's just kind of loading up on that, hoping to throw a one-two, one-two, but when he didn't hit it, at times he was actually like hammer punching uh, Parker, just like, yeah, the referee, almost like in desperation. The referee should have stopped that. That was dangerous. Yes. He shouldn't have allowed that. Uh, yeah, that was, was just for that really one spot crazy. in the last round or the next yeah. to last round, whatever it was. But look, Wilder, I said, it. you know, he, he hated me and, uh, and uh, I think he's matured a little bit. I think he has grown up a little bit, to be honest. But I, and I, give, and I give him credit for that. But because the way he used to act and talk before that, I had no use for it. I, I'm, I just didn't. But I said on ESPN, again, he didn't know how to fight. He never really got taught, or at least he didn't learn. Put it that way. I don't know what they were teaching him. But he didn't learn the things that you need to learn to be more than just a big banger. And he fought the right guys. They gave him the right guys to fight, and he banged them out. And he had a trouble with Ortiz, and he got to Ortiz late. Ortiz was 40, but he was a southpaw, good fighter, good uh, good amateur fighter, good puncher. And he finally got to Ortiz. He fought him twice. He knocked him out. You know, he was losing probably the first seven rounds, and then he knocked him out in the eighth round. I think that was their second fight. He's, but he fought a lot of guys, which they all do. That really was not not indicative of how good he was. It was just that they were guys that he could hit, and he knocked them out. But when he fought guys that he couldn't knock out, like Fury and you know, obviously Parker now, some of those shortcomings 
really came to the surface. They really came, they came home to roost, if you will. And I think that, again, you used the right word, that he, he got exposed. But I think he's been exposed before. That, that if he can't hit you, he's got a problem. And look, he's got heart. He's got plenty of heart. And he behaves like a fighter, which is important to me and to everybody. And, he, and he's, he's got good enough speed. And, you know, and he's got a good chin. He's proven that. But when you have a plan and when you know how to fight and you know how to avoid his, his one thing that you have to avoid if you're going to fight Wilder, the right hand. When you know how to do that, you got to win. You have an automatic W against him. You know how, and it's not easy because you got to go. You got to go through twelve rounds of walking through minefields, making sure you don't blow yourself up. That's what Parker. I'm sure his great trainer Andy Lee, the former world champ, who's done a great job with Parker since he took over. I'm sure that his heart was in his throat for those so every round. Like, oh my God. Because he came close to walking into a mine. There's a couple of times he reached in he and Wada just missed him. He leaned forward, he just missed him with an uppercut. Just missed him coming in with a right hand. Uh, there was a couple, even in the last round. Oh my God. He, uh, Parker pulled back with his hands a little loose, straight back from, from the clinch two times. I was like, oh my God, what is he doing? What is he doing? The, uh, and the punch just missed him. But let's all credit. I'm not here to knock Wadden. Wadden's a multi, multi millionaire. He, it's always going to be in the history books that he was a heavyweight champ of the world and he won a bronze medal in the Olympics. God bless him. Credit to you if you retire tomorrow, Deontay. Good career. Great career congratulations be happy with your life if you come back good luck but what i'm saying is based on truth nothing else and parker took advantage of that and parker walked through minefields give parker credit for that being that man that could do that and give his credit to his trainer they had the right fight plan and parker executed it they uh, and they did it. They yeah, you got to be careful, but you also have to create offense. They did both. They did both. What he did there, Parker did. He pressed the fight, but ca- cautiously aggressive, carefully, properly, little steps. A couple of times he reached in. He, oh, it almost was a disaster. But other than that, he was under control. He had his legs under him. He was coming in controlled. He was coming in prepared, not not just walking in where he could leave himself exposed to that great right hand. And I'll tell you, even a couple times when he jumped in with lead right hands, he did it smart. People are going to say, Teddy, what are you talking about? You just talked, you shouldn't jump in. No, if a guy is pulling back, then you could jump in with him and catch him pulling back. Those couple of spots, again, water doesn't do technically things doesn't do things technically correct as a fighter. So the couple of times when he pulled back, what did he do? He he came in with lead right hands, he being Parker, and he nailed him. And it looked like he was jumping in. No, he was coming in at the right time, the time of opportunity, the time that him and his trainer prepared the gym that they knew would be there for them when Wilder would expose himself and make himself vulnerable by crossing his legs, stepping straight back where you could go with him. He's not set to punch, and you could catch him with a right hand. And he did. And he caught him. He caught him throughout the fight. He did enough offense. At the same time, he was, a, he was conservative enough. He was buttoned up enough not to get caught anything big. And, uh, and he did it for 12 rounds. And, and again, the mental pressure 
when you're fighting a guy that dangerous, Ken, you have no idea. People out there have no idea of the mental pressure you go. You aged 10 years. I know his trainer <laughs> aged 10 years. Poor Andy, <laughs> poor Andy. He was like 45 going into the He's 55 now. I mean, because you know what the risk is. You, you, even if you're executing and, you, and you're making it look easy, you know it's not easy. You know the danger. And um, I give them nothing but, really, props for doing that job under those circumstances. Uh, he, he went to the body well, too. He mixed in some good body work, Parker. Uh, again, he almost knocked out Water. He almost got... He almost got the knockout. What round was it? I want to be accurate. But it was uh, eighth round, I believe, uh, where Wada hurt, where Wada got hurt badly um, in the eighth. And yeah, I think it was the eighth. I think it was the eighth round. He got hurt really bad in the eighth. Paul could try to finish him. Um, and he set up the big right hand that hurt Wada. Again, I always talk about the delivery system, not just the power, but the delivery system. And sure enough, Parker had the delivery system. He set up the big right hand that hurt Wada in the eighth round by bending low and tricking him, getting his eyes to drop a little bit, and then he threw high, and he caught him with that punch. So marvelous job by Parker. Uh, Wada, one thing I will throw in there, and it's only fair, he is 38 years old. Taking nothing away from Parker, but he is 38 years old. And he has been, you talked about it earlier, Ken, and rightfully so, we both did. But I brought it up, and then you talked about better be of getting old, but he hasn't been in a lot of wars in the pros. Right. Wada has. Wada yep. has. He's 38 years old, but he was in those wars with Fury where he got dropped. And those last two fights, he got knocked out in his last two fights with Fury. And he got dropped, he got off the floor, showed the heart of a warrior. He dropped Fury in the last one, but he wound up being knocked out. He, he took a huge punishment in those Fury fights. And you know what? It, it, you leave the ring minus some of yourself. And I think he yep. left the ring in those two fights minus some of himself. I, I don't think he he's fully got back everything he lost in those Fury fights, for what it's worth. And again, still dangerous as hell. Parker went in there, you know, he went into the lion's cage and he came out alive. He he you know, with with the teeth of the lion around his neck. He made a necklace out of it. Um so credit to him for doing that and and having the the gumption, the the mentality the confidence, the discipline uh, to do it. But I, I will, in all fairness to Wada, I don't care if you don't like me or not, I, I always want to be fair. <laughs> 38 years old, tough fights with Fury. You know, he's he's had something taken out of him. But, and then something more now with Parker. But great job by Parker. I, I, the 12th round, Wilder was desperate. And you brought it yeah. up, Ken. He hammer fisted. I don't know how the referee didn't warn him for hammer fisted. You're not in the MMA. Come on, what are you doing? Uh, but Wilder was trying right to the end to get the knockout. And, um, and he, he just couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> 